Hi, Leah. I'm very happy that you uh, are here and that we can talk about your points of view of Reiki and about your academical work about Reiki. And I'm very curious, and I guess the audience is too, what is it, what you do, and what are your projects? Would you like to talk a little bit about your work? Sure. Well, first of all, I'm very, very happy to be here too. This is very exciting. And I'm excited always to talk with you, Walter. And uh, yeah, so about my projects, um, I've been in uh, I've been in Reiki for so close to 20 years. Uh, Reiki master since uh, 2001, I think something like that. And well, I think Reiki was uh, Reiki is kind of my compass. It is the north. It is the true north in my compass. And looking back at my life, I, I, I see that it has led me uh, in this path all the time. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 21, 22, uh, what we do in Israel after we finish the army is that usually we go to study something uh, oh. at the university. And I went to study East Asian studies and started the uh, um, Japanese history and the Japanese religion and spirituality. And this has led me uh, after, the, after the first degree, uh, in the second degree, I decided to make a, a distinct focus on um, Japanese esoteric Buddhism and esoteric uh, practices. And I wrote my thesis on the esoteric roots of Reiki, of the system of Reiki. Um, I finished it in 2015. And ever since, well, I moved to Japan to, to write uh, for a year to write it. And uh, coming back in 2015, uh, I moved to my next project, which is now my doctoral uh, thesis. And, and I'm, I'm touching like the the tips of the of these uh, icebergs, so to say, um, are uh, will also be on the subject of Reiki, and it will be on let's let's say on the subject of Reiki masters or Reiki mastery, um, of the 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 giants in our in our system, so to say, and what makes uh, uh, what makes the, the great Reiki masters? What did they leave for us? Um, Again, this is in a very, very short, in very short description. Um, we started in the past uh, close to a year now, uh, an Israeli Re uh, Reiki community of Reiki masters, um, the Reiki master community. And um, at this point in time, it is roughly 200 people, all Reiki masters, and they're hoping to hoping to increase the, the vibration and to um, uh, increase again the public opinion of Reiki and uh, the amount of people uh, taking Reiki classes and uh, you know doing community work. Wonderful. These are great ideas. So you want, if I understand you right, help Reiki masters to become in a way better Reiki masters, more successful Reiki masters, and so being able to distribute Reiki to more people and also in a higher quality way, right? Yeah, um, that, 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 sum, that sums it up pretty great, I think, mm -hmm. because I think that a lot of, a lot of uh, um, Reiki practitioners, Reiki masters who've been around for, for a while, have seen how, um, you know, there's a big boom of Reiki in uh, the starting from you know the 1980s but really the 1990s and the early 2000s there was a huge huge reiki uh, um you can call it a wave or you can call it a very big popularity and reiki has become kind of a synonym to uh, hands-on healing or energetic healing or work or path uh, uh in the west today um Reiki teachers taught and taught so many and taught so many and ever since starting starting early 2000s and, and until now this trend has started to wane. It, there, there was a, a, 
uh, degrading in, in the popularity of, of Reiki study and, and taking Reiki classes. And this is one of the things that I'm trying to study, trying to understand what are the causes of this trend. Um, and this is twofold. This is one, okay, there is, there is academic interest in this. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to understand why things are happening in, in the realm of spiritual uh, movements or spiritual practices. What are the things that make the waxing and waning mm -hmm. of, of spiritual movement and spiritual practices. But the most important thing to me was that what I'm doing will have practical ramifications or practical knowledge for for my people, yeah, for the Reiki people, mm -hmm. for my brothers and sisters in Reiki. And right. when you, I think that when you understand what are the reasons, well, first of all, what, what are the reasons for decline, mm -hmm. you, can, mm -hmm. you can start to hack away at these reasons and you can start to change from the root and up to try to change it. So... Oh. One of, the, one of the things that could be practical for us as uh, Reiki masters, as, as a Reiki community, is to understand what are those things. Yeah. And in a later phase is to understand what are the things that, that were the roots of the success. What made the great Reiki teachers so great? Mm -hmm. um, and can we replicate it? Yeah, is the is the is the, mag is the real magical formula. Can we replicate their success? That is a, an extremely interesting project, I, I guess, because uh, quality in Reiki is what I'm aiming at since uh, 30 years, and um, I think you you did also another academic work about initiations, right? Yeah, that was that was for my MA. I, I started with initiations and I think, by the way, they are connected. Oh. Those, let's say the, the project of initiations and the project of trying to understand the anatomy of the Reiki master, they are, uh, they are connected. Um, I think that what, what first drew me to, to, to study the initiations um, and what first drew me to try and make the anatomy was actually a practical uh, necessity. I was writing, yes, um, don't we all learn that Reiki is, uh, you know, I, when I took my first Reiki class somewhere in 1999 or 2000, something like that, um, the Reiki master, the, my first teacher said that Reiki is 2000 years old. It comes from uh, uh, from ancient ancient places in the east, and that Usui Sensei, uh, he called them Doctor Usui at the time, uh, found and reinvigorated this uh, this system. He reinvented, in a way, something that was very much there. Yeah, and that's what I heard. This is that this is something that a lot of us heard, especially back in those days the story of how Reiki was rediscovered. Right. And uh, I felt like there was something to it, but, there, but this, is, uh, this check has no cover. Yeah, um, we need, so um, we do not know where it's from, we do not know how, and when, when we say it's, it's ancient, or when we say it has ancient roots, we do not actually have evidence of these roots. So side to side with, my, uh, with what I studied in, uh, in, the, in East Asian religions, in East Asian spirituality, especially in the, in the esoteric uh, um, uh, traditions of, of East Asia, yeah, starting, stemming from India to China and, and Japan mainly, uh, I know that I'm producing here, um, I, I felt that there were, there were things that I studied and, and the teachers would say, well, this is the unique fingerprint of, let's say, esoteric or tantric Buddhism and all of these things. This is very unique. And I'm sitting and I'm saying, I know this stuff. I learned it in Reiki. So, and then I start to understand that here is maybe there is a lead, there is a connection. So I started to study and 
in my MA, which uh, um, we're supposed to uh, write a thesis, um, I decided that I'm going to write about the connection between, uh, between Reiki and esoteric Buddhism. Very interesting subject. Indeed, and very much so. And, the, and one of these very big hallmarks of this connection, this very ancient, very deep connection between the two is the initiation. Mm -hmm. So, or in a way is to say that when we perform initiations today, the Reiki initiations, we're actually re-enacting very ancient tradition, very ancient initiatory tradition, uh, very ancient uh, practice that's, mm -hmm. that stems very far, farther back from Reiki. And I wanted to show it. I wanted to show this connection. And as probably many uh, Reiki, Reiki practitioners and Reiki teachers know, that there is a variance between initiations, not just okay. within one tradition where there could be different initiations between levels, even within one level could be um, uh, different initiations for distinct uh, capabilities or symbols and, so and such, but definitely between. Uh, different levels, but when we take different traditions of Reiki, when I say traditions, I mean what Reiki Master A teaches and Reiki Master B teaches Good. could be stuff that are, are uh, um, seem far apart, at least yeah. in the, let's say, the protocol of the initiation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I write something and, and, and base, based on initiation, say that there is a connection between esoteric Buddhism and Reiki, and Reiki, how can I say when, when I am basing on one initiations and there are so many? So I'm open to criticism, or I'm open to someone saying, but my initiations, my initiations are completely different. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is very anecdotal. So pra practically what I had to do was to try and, and find some sort of key features that connect initiations so that I can say, here is a basic uh, skeleton, here is a basic anatomy of sorts that is similar between many different initiations. So I started collecting. Mm -hmm. Well, first I studied under several teachers from several different uh, traditions and uh, started analyzing initiations and comparing them and then I had very wonderful and cooperative uh, Reiki master colleagues who sent me uh, um, manuals and Reiki initiation protocols and we would talk about them and I started collecting initiations from all over the world. Wow. Also from different points in time because mm -hmm. it was important for me also to take initiations that were not from a specific stem of lineage, but we needed to take, you know, let's say pre Takata and so on. So different points in time and milestones in time and in space uh, all over the world. And I, and then there was like a bunk when, you know, when I realized that in underneath the clothes and the skin, there is an anatomy that connects all of the initia initiations together. So mm -hmm. the protocol in one, you can do this, and in the other, you can do that, so to speak. Um, but, there, but there are different uh, manifestations of the same spiritual idea or, the, or different techniques to achieve the same, same key phases or uh, capabilities. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, this became the framework for my MA thesis, the, the anatomy of initiations. And there's more to talk about it, but I'm returning back to, to the original question about, the, about, uh, about also the anatomy of the great teachers. When I started when I started out for my doctoral thesis, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, 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 well, at first I thought that I would, it would be just an expansion of my, the same subject of initiations, but going further. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting interested in Reiki masters. I started getting interested in what we spoke about, mm -hmm. about the rise of Reiki, let's call it, and about the decline of mm -hmm. popularity in Reiki and how Reiki was influenced by many systems, mm -hmm. especially in the West, yeah? And how Reiki has influenced many spiritual systems and became the basic narrative for many things today that supposedly have nothing to do with Reiki. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of these subjects started to interest me and, and I realized that one thing that connects all of them is the Reiki master. Yeah, right. The Reiki master. He is, the Reiki master is the piece of the puzzle now, mm -hmm. which is very important. He, the Reiki masters were the main uh, responsible for the rise and the decline of the popularity of Reiki. They are the main responsibility for the receiving of outside uh, influences mm -hmm. and the influence of Reiki on other mm -hmm. traditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, uh, that is a fascinating subject you are uh, doing your work on. Um, I guess that you have a, a very good idea why Reiki today is being needed by people. Would you like to introduce us to this idea? Well, um, I guess, well, well, first of all, I think it's, uh, maybe it's a good time to, to remind that this is my, my opinion and this is the way I see things and I don't consider uh, my opinion to be ob uh, uh, absolute objective truth, <laughs> of course, but why I think that Reiki is so needed today, I think that actually now, you know, people talk about the past of how there was this big opportunity in Reiki, especially in the 90s. Um, I think now is the greatest opportunity of all in Reiki, because now the world has reached the critical mass mm -hmm. of the... So oh, oh, let's let's look at the classic, for example, the mass the the Maslow pyramid uh, of needs from you know from from the basic uh, uh, survivability to to food and shelter and to all of these things. Now, for the first time in history, there are huge amounts of mankind, billions of people, who are not in everyday true struggle for survival right yes more money but but they're not they're not hungry for food uh, um, or shelter and the basics so right now people are people are are hunting for meaning yeah. they are for the first time there are billions of people especially we're talking the about the oecd countries yeah well, most of, you know, we're talking about um, about over 2 billion people who are not about their survival. Mm -hmm. They they are now at, this, at the point of what is my meaning? Right. What, wh what, what, what do I want from my life? What do I want to do with myself? And mm -hmm. the old stories too are, are crushing down. So there is no true new story to take us forward. And right now, to fill this, it's, it's a gap. It's a gap. It's, it comes from a good place, yeah? It comes from a good place, but it's still a gap, a spiritual community social gap. Mm -hmm. and right now, there is nothing real yet to fill this gap for the masses, for many people. Um, so they fill it up with time-consuming things like social media and uh, silly apps and all sorts of things and, and, and that, that do not really give them what they need. So they, so they try to get more. Um, I, I recommend uh, reading a, a wonderful history professor called uh, Ehud Harari, mm -hmm. who wrote several uh, 
very nice books from, uh, I think, The Brief History of Mankind uh, is one of them. And another one is called The History of Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, and, and in it, uh, he speaks about how in, the, in, in, in a century, we have pretty much um, taken off of the table the three main things on the agenda of mankind for most of history. For most of history, the things that, you know, if you look at all the, at, at all the canonical writings of religions and, what, and, and, and through the writings of history, the, the most, the things that, you know, that were the main problems of, of humans throughout the ages, throughout most of, of human history are hunger, plague, and war or violence. So this is what killed most people. Yeah, it was either lack of food, um, uh, infectious disease, or by someone else's sword. Mm -hmm. And within a century, the mankind wakes up and and it's not like there are not still millions of people suffering from these things. I'm not saying, uh, he's not saying that it's not happening, but nonetheless, there are more people um, dying from obesity and too much food than people dying from hunger and lack of food. There right. are more people dying from the disease of old age than from any infectious disease. And I'm saying this even, this day in the days of COVID-19 still. And there are more people dying by killing themselves than by being killed by another man. So right. in one century, it was a big switch. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what will be the new things on the agenda? There is no vacuum. What will be the new things that will, uh, um, that will replace? And Harari, uh, speaks, uh, he mentions three that, that are very interesting thing to think about. One is the pursuit of immortality or a longer and longer life. The second is the pursuit of bliss and happiness, especially since we are living longer and longer and in relative welfare. So we want to, to we want our lives to be better and better. We want to be in in happiness and in bliss. And the third is the pursuit of godlike powers, especially of creation. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these things are now kind of being put on the table of science, mm -hmm. table of, of uh, technology. Now I place Reiki on the second pursuit, and that is the pursuit of bliss and happiness, because mm -hmm. Reiki is a Reiki is a path to happiness and bliss and good fortune. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, the first, the first words of one of the only things that we have from Usui Sensei's own words in, in, the, in the, what is known as like the scroll of the five precepts is the, the, the best or the secret formula to invite bliss and happiness. Okay, it is Shofuku no Hiho. It's the, 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 it is a formula. Hiho could be best, uh, for the, the best method or the very, very, very good one, a very, a very, uh, um, very successful one. And it could be a secret or esoteric uh, method to invite happiness. Mm -hmm. So here we have. A very simple system, very simple, that anyone and everyone can do in our daily lives, right here, right now. It's not meant for monks in a monastery, like many, many um, spiritual traditions and spiritual practices are based on monastic traditions and monastic practices. Yeah. They are meant for monks. Yeah, I'm not discounting these. Some of these are, are excellent, of course, excellent. But Reiki is meant for the everyday person. That's what so we need. A tool. It is a tool for the everyday person to invite happiness and bliss and to fill the hole that is the gap, the main gap, the main 
ailment of the 21st century, the lack of meaning, the lack of, of spiritual fulfillment, of spiritual, um, I think fulfillment is the way to say it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, you, you consider Reiki being a, a great medicine, so to say, a spiritual medicine for today's people who are in search for a meaning. Yeah, and, and that is why, you know, saying that Reiki has reached its peak mm -hmm. is, I think Reiki is not even close to its peak because we assume we can, we can, uh, uh, we can kind of uh, uh, make, a, make a calculation that there should be something between 10 to 15 million Reiki practitioners, something like that. It needs to be times 10 than that. It needs to be, oh. needs to be 100 million. <laughs> uh, it needs to be 150 million. That, that's, that, th th that's the amount of people who actually need it, actually more. And, and that's what I'm saying. Now is, the, now is the true time for Reiki. This, this needs to be the age of Reiki. So you're talking about a Reiki renaissance? Yes. Oh, wow. wow. That's a great way to say it. Indeed. Yeah. Wow. That, that is something I, I, I like. You know, I, I agree totally that uh, Reiki can do so much for today's people with all the stress and all the frustration, all the insecurity. Reiki can be a safe haven to create inner freedom and inner peace. Um, is there anything you could recommend to people when, um, when they want to get an idea of what you think today's spirituality has to give to them? Not necessarily Reiki books, but any spiritual literature, psychological, philosoph philosophical books which you think that would be a good read for someone who says, well, I want to fill that void within me. I want to go for a meaning. What would your recommendation be? Oh, wow. The, <laughs> there, there's, there are so many, actually. Um, I, would say first and for, I would say first and foremost, to be, even before any list of, of great books, is to actually work on one's ability to learn and one's ability to grow, one's ability to read. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend reading one book every week. It's Great. not, a, it's, it's not, uh, it's not <laughs> such a hard task actually, especially if you set time. Something, if, if you, I think uh, uh, some people made, took all the, took the, the average, uh, of all the books from Amazon, they took like some metadata and they figured out what is the amount of words, <laughs> you know, the average or the, the, the mean of the amount of words in all the books from Amazon to get put together. And, they, and the average amount of words a person, uh, the, the average word uh, person can read. And they came to the conclusion that in something like 30 minutes a day, you will finish the average book within a week. So actually that's a very, yes, between 30 to 45 minutes, I think, something like that. It's really, and that actually doesn't seem so bad mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you take that into consideration. And, I, and uh, something like a year ago, I started just doing it. Great. And I've been reading something from between one to two books a week. Wow. Uh, and, you know, it's all of a sudden, becomes this uh, all those books that I've ever ever wanted to read from fiction to 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 classics to important works in philosophy and uh, spirituality to um, things that are very relevant for research or for work so if if there's any my if there's any I think my advice would be to actually make a list mm -hmm of books that you want to read mm -hmm. and then schedule like 30 minutes a day and just start reading them. Just take Thank the first you. one. Yeah. Thank and you. <coughs> so there's, there, besides that, there are so many I cannot, 
Um, I, I'm afraid I will do a disservice to so many others if I if I mention one or two that are. Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, great advice, Leah. Um, is in in your Reiki history, you said you were doing close to 20 years of Reiki now. You must have had several wow moments where you have an ex had an experience with yourself when being treated or when you were treating others. Would you like to share some of these wow moments of Reiki with us? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my first wow moments were when I, when, I, when I started 20 years ago. I can, I remember, I remember completely the layout of, of the place where I took my Reiki one, my first Reiki one class. One, I remember where the, where, you know, the room and the size and the people sitting and I remember some of the memory. people there. What? Photographic memory. Uh, perhaps, but, but, but it made a big impression on me, most, yeah. to taking Reiki even for yeah. the first time. And ever since, I think that Reiki has a remarkable, remarkable capability to wow us even after so long. Mm -hmm. Even after so long, during uh, daily Reiki practice, and I practice Reiki every day, treatment, precepts, uh, meditation, uh, which I practice every day, and also initiations at least once a month. And it is amazing, even after 20 years of, of, of practicing, especially with, with uh, um, lay on hands part of Reiki practice, which has been the longest that I've been doing in a row, it can still surprise after all these years, there could still be this moment of great, of great connection or a great embodiment of Reiki. So um, I, I guess that uh, you would not share the opinion like I have heard that you do uh, Reiki one, one weekend, Reiki two the next, then you become Reiki master and then you go on studying Taro and shamanism. Exactly. When you do it, you know, when you do that on the first day and then that on the second and that's it, you will probably move on to something else. Yeah. Um, because in this, in this way, you, you, most people, most people probably do not get enough to understand what they have in their hands. What is the what is the huge potential? Huge the Reiki. I mean, I'm, I'm not even talking about the fact that you have the perfect mobile application. You don't even need to have your 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 phone with you. You have it in your hands. It's the perfect app, the perfect mobile app. It's always with you. Um, not even that, um, but the profoundity. I mean, Reiki is absolutely amazing. And this is one of the things that wows me the most in Reiki. So simple. I mean, come on, it's so simple. It's so, it, it almost seems from the outside, you know, it seems like a joke. I mean, I remember taking my first Reiki class and this guy take, tells me that he's going to do some hocus pocus on me and I will be connected to the spirit of the universe from now until forever. And all I need to do was slap on my hand somewhere and that's it. Healing just starts flowing. And, and not just that, from now till the end of my life, this thing is there. Come on, are you kidding me? It sounds, it sounds like baloney. And then when you start doing it, you're, you're like, shit, this is for real. <laughs> and yeah. So, so, it, from the outside, for, from, for, for, the, for the mind, I would say for the, for the for reason, it seems unreasonable that something so simple or so sometimes so reductionist in a way could be so profound. But that's why it is a practical. Reiki is a practical system. If you don't practice it, you will never re scratch the surface of its profoundity. But once you do, once you step through this gate, you do realize that these simple practices are the gateway to the most profound of systems. Yeah. This, yeah. These are the roots of Reiki. This, the, the, this is the geniusness of the Reiki system. Mm -hmm. This simple 
everyday thing that every person can do is a gateway to the most secret, esoteric, profound practice of the masters who spent their years and years and years uh, perfecting mm -hmm. their systems. And here you have this entryway in, mm -hmm. into this rabbit hole into, mm -hmm. their, into their profound truths. This is Reiki. This is the wow. And you don't have to be for several years in a cave in the Himalayas. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go on a 20, 21 day fast on Mount Kurama uh, to risk your life. And you don't have to, to, no, you don't have to become a monk. You just need to practice Reiki like you were taught every day and invite the bliss and, and, and fill this, uh, fill your life with this, with this wonderful thing and let it guide you and let it mix into your foundations. And, and this is something that any Reiki person listening to this or, or, or somehow or watching this knows, especially after years of being with Reiki and looking at it from the, from the uh, height of time, mm -hmm. Reiki becomes mixed into your foundations. Mm -hmm. it, it leads you in, in beautiful ways, you know, every person I speak to uh, who is into Reiki and they've studied so many things, so many of them say, well, Reiki is what started it all. Reiki mm -hmm. is what ignites, you know, ignited me or ignites me on this journey. And it's, it's always, it becomes part of your spiritual DNA. Wow, always. it touches me. Your, your dedication to Reiki, it is so radiant. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's what Reiki does to you. <laughs> <laughs> so could you identify some essential motivation why you wanted to become Reiki master? Um, well, I, I think that there are many different motivations to become Reiki master. I mean, I was 17 when I studied Reiki Master. Mm -hmm. I was really young. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it was, you know, I, I started with Reiki One and I was immediately wowed by how great it was for me. And it made a huge impact in my life. And I was already into, you know, practicing all sorts of spirituality and and recognized this, this beautiful thing. And so in a way, I would say also that there was this hunger to know it all. Okay, I it's okay, I, I can say it. Um, it's not the best of, uh, it's not the best of, of, uh, of reasons that, that, you know, that you want to, um, that you want to know all about the system, that you, okay, so Reiki one, ooh, wow, I want to know Reiki two. Okay, Reiki two, wow, I want, what's the next? Reiki master, make me a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. How much is it? I'll go sell, I'll go in, in the streets uh, uh, working as selling sandwiches to, to make the money all through the summer vacation and study Reiki master, okay? And I'll tell you why I choose to, to be a Reiki master, why I choose this journey of mastery all the time right now. Because, you know, if someone came to me, by the way, when, when, when I'm asked at times from people who want to study Reiki Master, to, uh, to study Reiki Master with me, and one of the things that I ask is, what are, what are your reasons that you want to become Reiki Master? And if, if someone were to tell me, you know, I want to learn it all, or I want to learn all the levels because it is, you know, what is the next thing? I don't know if it's a good enough reason to, to be a teacher because to be a teacher, you need to be, you need to be in love with the system. You need right. to be, to love, you need to practice it. How can you teach something that you don't really practice on yourself? No. Uh, that you don't, that you haven't had a journey with yourself. Uh, and that is the case with many Reiki teachers, by the way. Many Reiki yeah, masters. Mastery is a journey, and it is it is a continuing journey, and it is mastery. There is 
much weight to this word. It's not something you can learn in a weekend or in a series of meetings. It is something that you earn that you pr by practicing and by taking a journey. Um, so the reason I choose to be a Reiki master is, well, well, well is my love for Reiki, my dedication, my absolute belief, 100% mm -hmm. unequivocal, that this is great, that this system is, is beautiful and profound, and it, and it really, is a, really is an answer, a cure for all these ailments that we spoke about, for that this is 100% pure, and good and having practiced it so much on myself that i want other people to have this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the, the not not going to say like this is the only way or but, but this is a reason this is this love of reiki and love for other people by the way yes this love yes. for service i you know I understand how much it can do for people and it is the only kind of the only way in a way to to want to pay it forward so it's about compassion yes it's one yin thing I'd say canon <laughs> well canon is my is my uh, she's my guardian deity she's uh, oh, okay. uh, thousand handed yeah, 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 yeah. So, I've seen her in Kyoto. Wow. Yeah, I understand that. Is there, is there th something you would recommend to um, a serious Reiki practitioner not to do? <laughs> uh, yes, certainly. I would, I would definitely recommend, uh, have something to recommend not to do, especially because I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. You have been there, burnt the shirt. I see. <laughs> I, I, yes, exactly. I, I, I have the, the burnt shirt. Yeah. So when I look at the, back at those years, and and you know, it, I learned Reiki as something that was very traditional, something that was very um, uh, similar or. Uh, precise coming down the lineage. Mm -hmm. I was told by my teacher, look, I taught you everything exactly like I was taught mm -hmm. by a person who taught me exactly like he was taught and so on and so forth until the patriarch. Yeah, until the starter of the system. So what you have is the absolute original. I heard this. Right? I'm, yeah. so, I'm so happy. And then, um, uh, early 2000s, there was this uh, uh, time of a Reiki organization in my country, and they started making meetings of many Reiki masters. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of the reasons was in the hopes that uh, um, through these meetings, they will be able to create some sort of uh, baseline for Reiki teaching, for legislation, for uh, uh, being uh, um, recognized by the medical institutions, for, a, for uh, uh, insurance, mm -hmm. and so on. So, mm -hmm. they, so many teachers, many, many Reiki masters attended. And one of the things that were apparent that there are differences, okay? One of these things, they started to create a, a, a sense, and that sense started to grow of doubt, a question mark. Yeah. Um, this question mark was, what, why, why was I taught that I had the original system or, or, or an original system, or authentic, and, and all of these teachers are now meeting and, and and going at each other for their original system, for what they consider as the original system. So, so first of all, I'm not sure if mine is actually the original. What if this guy is actually the real one or that one? 
clash of traditions. That also there started coming all sorts of stories from Japan of how the Japanese, they do it so different than us. We are not doing the original Reiki. The original Reiki is over there and so on. And all these things that made me doubt they, there are rumors about the symbols. Not everyone has the symbols. Not everyone does this. Or he he taught this the symbols to the people who were so so spirituality. All all of these things, and for years I was lost because of these things. For years, all the way until I had to go to Japan and live there for a year and become member of the Usui Reiki Ryo Hogakai. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to understand that the similarities far outweigh the differences. We are all doing the original system. We are all doing the authentic system. Mm -hmm. So two things here are things that need to be, that I would warn anyone against. First, never use these words authentic and real and, and the only way and all these things that belong to dogma, they belong in the past. That's the one right. thing. Okay. It is also, by the way, we started our conversation with how, with, with the reasons for decline. Yeah. Dogma is one of these reasons. Yeah. Dogma is, and the quibbling between uh, different factions, creation of factions, uh, and lineages going against each other and saying, I have the true Reiki, I have the true Reiki, come on. We, you know, once you're there, you, you, there is no, no such thing. Mm -hmm. as the real Reiki. We are all practicing facets of this beautiful diamond. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and, and the second is, and the second is this, que this, this question of what is the original or what is the, or did they do this or do that? It, it, again, it's a part of this, this whole thing. Reiki is a beautiful diamond. A diamond has facets. And the facets of the diamond are what gives the diamond its fire, its sparkle. And all of the traditions and all of the Reiki masters, all of the practitioners, all of the practices, they are all beautiful facets of this diamond. And they are what gives it its beautiful light, its beautiful fire. A great metaphor. A great metaphor. Um, is the is uh, something you have identified um, about what makes the probability high that a facet belongs to that diamond? <coughs> Can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, for example, there are many um, systems of energy work uh, around which have the term Reiki within its title. And they might be wonderful ways of healing and spirituality. I, most of them I just don't know. But if someone tells me, well, that is Reiki, like Uzui did it. And what they do is microcosmic orbit and they uh, use Norwegian runes and they use um, poems from Finland. And they, they tell you that that is what Uzui really meant. So maybe, but could you find out, is there anything where you could say, well, there is a border and this belongs in a way or another to the heritage of Uzui, but this, this I would be in doubt. Okay, so thank you. Um, I think that, well, since Reiki influenced many, many systems in the West, mm -hmm. and there are many things, well, first of all, there are many systems that have the word Reiki uh, inside them that are not part of the system, they're not stemming from uh, the system that Usui Mikao started yeah. uh, in the 1920s in Japan. Um, I would say that although, you know, the word Reiki was not invented by Usui Sensei, it mm -hmm. was there. Um, for quite a long time, actually. It was not invented by, by him. Um, he was not the only system of Reiki either. That is why his system is called Usui Reiki Ryoho. Ah, okay. Uh, why was it not called just Reiki Ryoho or Reiki, or at least Reiki Ryoho? 
because it was Sui's system of Reiki, because there were others' systems of Reiki. Wow. Nonetheless, none, it's, it's okay. But nonetheless, I think that it's important to say, or at least in, in my understanding, in the West today, or it's a, in the world today, when we say Reiki, mm -hmm. it is actually an abbreviation of Usui Reiki Ryo. Yeah, okay? sure. Yeah. The, it was the system brought to the West, brought uh, by uh, um, uh, Takata Hawaii. It mm -hmm. was the system brought by Takata Hawaii, which immigrated Reiki, the word Reiki, the notion of Reiki, the, the system of levels uh, um, um, with initiations to connect and to rise between them. All of these things, these are things, this system of Reiki mm -hmm. is what, what was brought by Hawaii Takata uh, uh, to the West. Mm -hmm. This is what has generated the notion of Reiki in the West. I see. You know, I see. Okay. So when people say Reiki, they are actually saying Usui Reiki. I'm yeah. not saying that we are we are you know we have uh, 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 we are the sole proprietors of this uh, notion, but this is actual. This is actuality. Mm -hmm. This is what brought Reiki to the West. Mm -hmm. Now, other systems. Um, other systems took this name out of, especially in the heyday of popularity, Reiki became so popular that the word, the term Reiki became like synonymous with energy work and with connecting with uh, the consciousness uh, of the universe and so on. So they started using the word Reiki. So now we have this situation where the word Reiki in the West comes from Usui Reiki, but there are systems who use it which are not Usui Reiki. As far as I'm concerned, or the way I see things, um, Reiki as the system of Reiki, the system of Reiki stems from Usui. I do not judge any other system, any other spirituality, none whatsoever, as long as it doesn't hurt its, uh, its uh, practitioners and, and the people around them, of course vice versa okay there are over 6000 uh medical researches showing myriad of spiritual practices from uh from yoga to chinese medicine to to meditations from all over the world from uh, south america to kabbalah to all of these things that show various wonderful uh effects on the body on the life of a person. This can be seen in saliva and blood even after minutes mm -hmm. of practice. This can be seen even in MRI after as low as two months of wow. practicing many meditations, many types of yoga and things. After two months, there, you know, your corpus callosum will be bigger. That's the part that connects the two lobes. Amygdala shrinks, that's the part mainly uh, um, uh, producing the fear-inducing or stress-inducing cortisol, it will shrink, and we can see it in MRI. Mm -hmm. So the Reiki does not have superiority or or any or any way to say well, well Reiki is better. The oh. only thing that I like, I like bet, I think that Reiki has this great thing about it is its simplicity. Is as I mentioned earlier about how. Many systems are, were created by very religious, monastic uh, mm -hmm. uh, practices and uh, backgrounds. They are meant for people who basically live their entire lives and do only this. And Reiki is meant for the people. It's by the people, yeah. for the people. Yeah. It's yeah. for the working man or woman or child. Or yeah. <laughs> so so this, is, this is the, the true... The, the true, uh, you, meant, you you said, what, what about this part of the diamond or this is so great? Yeah, I would say it's simplicity. It's mm -hmm. democracy. It's, uh, uh, it's how every person in today's setting can practice it profoundly and efficiently uh, in the way it was supposed to be practiced and get results. Wonderful.
Thank you, Leah. That is much food for thought. <laughs> so thank you for this interview. And I'm looking much forward to hear and read more from you. And I think you will be a frequent guest on my Facebook site because I would love to learn more from you and to see what the outcome of your research will be, which you have in progress right now. I well, first of all, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply grateful for this. Uh, this was wonderful. Uh, I will. I, I can now go back to the fake beach uh, <laughs> behind me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, this this has been a wonderful opportunity, and I'm very, very grateful. Very thankful. Uh, thankful to you, and thankful for anyone who's listening or watching this. And uh, I urge you to to learn more Reiki and to practice more Reiki and to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, in the in the smallest of things, in practice of the precepts every day, and in practice of meditation and daily uh, and daily lay on hands, and also uh, taking initiations once in a while, and go learn more Reiki from more teachers and more uh, sources, and discover more of this amazing puzzle. Thank you, thank you so much. Walter, this was beautiful. Thank you for your questions and for your all your presence and gifts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liad. <laughs>